the biofuel stories now have gotten so polarized that you're either with us or against us. You know, it does become black or white. Having headlines say there can be some problems with making biofuels some way would have been great. Instead, they basically said all biofuels are bad, which is not at all the case. There are ways to make biofuels that have benefits and ways that don't. And what society has to do is make sure that the ones that, that are made for us are the ones that actually give us benefits. Our main point was you really ought to pay attention to how you produce the biofuels, not that biofuels are good or bad in and of themselves. In a broad sense, there are, there are two kinds of biofuels. One kind are biofuels that we derive from our current food crops, and that's the kind we're making right now. The shortcomings are it takes a lot of energy to grow the corn, to grow the soybeans. It takes a lot of energy to convert those into usable energy sources. When you're done with all of that, 80% of the energy in that gallon of ethanol is fossil energy it took to make the fertilizer, to grow the corn, to transport the corn, and convert the corn into ethanol. Only 20% of each gallon is new energy. We're not getting a very good return on our energy investment. The second major kind of biofuels are biofuels that are made from perennial plants, from long live plants that we can go out and harvest on, on a regular basis. And you can convert that by a series of modern processes into a liquid fuel. You can make ethanol out of it, you can make synthetic gasoline out of it, synthetic diesel. Most people believe that within five or so years, we'll have commercially viable ways to take hay or wood chips or a high diversity mixture of prairie grasses, take that biomass, mow it, cut it, whatever, uh, and convert it into liquid fuels. Almost all the energy that you get out is actually new, non-fossil energy, renewable energy. We're really trying to think about um, taking account of all of the costs associated with consequences of producing and using various fuels, you know, what's really in society's best interest. So that means taking account of the costs of the labor and the you know, equipment and so forth, but also taking account of the environmental costs. So including you know, what effect does this have on carbon emissions and other greenhouse gas emissions. We need not just more energy, we need energy that doesn't have greenhouse gas impacts. And the biofuels made from perennial plants have very low greenhouse gas impacts. In fact, some of them, we showed, are actually what are called carbon negative. At the end of the whole life cycle, you have less carbon dioxide in the air than you had at the start of it. We're having about, um, no, it's about a ton and a half of carbon dioxide removed from the air every year by these plants. It becomes organic matter in their roots, and those roots are shed, uh, and, and that uh, organic matter slowly builds up in the soil. Prairie lives basically forever. Once you plant it, you can harvest it year after year after year. You do not need to replant it. It's a very stable ecosystem that can be harvested every year with no trouble. Because of the carbon dioxide that is taken by the plants and stored in the soil, in the whole life cycle of this fuel, there is less greenhouse gas in the air when you're done making it and burning it than there was beforehand. In addition to that, there's a lot of waste biomass that is not being used. We have a lot of paper that right now goes into landfills that we could separate and use to make biofuels. We actually have a lot of manure that isn't being used uh, as it could be. That manure actually has a lot of energy in it. That could also be made into biofuels. We think we can probably have two times the energy coming from waste that we can get from dedicated energy crops and degraded land. If producing biofuels involves a lot of clearing of forests or native prairies, that's where you're going to get what we call the carbon debt. If you produce the biofuels from waste uh, material, we're not clearing land, we're getting a valuable product um, that can be used to replace fossil fuels, and there it's just pure gain. Although there's a lot more work to be done in these kinds of issues, there, there is an immense potential with, with further research and, and some creativity uh, to have us uh, start solving the uh, global climate change kinds of issues through these kind of approaches. Energy and the environment will really be one of the fundamental challenges that society faces over the next 50 years. We can't just say we need energy. We need energy that gives us environmental benefits at the same time. In the end, we're going to have to have uh, a predominance on renewable energy sources. We're going to have to have a sustained push to get these renewables to replace um, conventional fossil fuels. I think these are problems that will be solvable. I don't see any issue with solving these problems. Um, I just hope that we start trying to solve them very soon.